Hi guys, it's Nancy and I am doing another video for the Not Too Shabby Shop on this oh so cute uh, puppy. It is a pug, but it's the Not Too Shabby Pug in a Cup. I will link it for you guys. And I think I'm going to try some watercolor markers with this one. Um, previously I made a card and it had the Action Wobbler on it. You guys really like that, but um, let's do some watercolor. So I have some um, Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock here. So let me grab one of these. I'm going to put that in my mini misty. And I'm going to stamp on the smooth side. I am going to stamp with some VersaFine Claire ink because it does work with markers and watercoloring. Just got to heat set it, but I like how super black it gets. Oh, that looks pretty good just on the first try. to dry a second while I clean my stamp off. And I have some watercolor markers. So I have a variety of different ones. I have some of the new, um, all to new watercolor brush markers. I have, um, some of the mermaid markers, some Perrine markers, some Zig markers. So I have all, all of those. And then I have some water, just plain water brush pens and some paper towels. All right. So let's start with our little puppy. I think I'm going to make him brown. I think last time I made him like a grayish color. So. Some different color browns here we can use. Oops. All right. So the first one is the lightest one. It's called paper bag. And I think what I'll do is wet the area first. This is a Tim Holtz fine tip water brush so I can get into all the little areas there. And then go in with the, the marker. Because um, the watercolor paper soaks up the color so quickly, I like to work in small areas because I find that if it dries too quick, I don't get a chance to move the color around. So if that happens to you, just work in small areas. And because it's watercolor paper, it can take it, it can take you adding more water, adding more ink, it'll just um, soak it all in.
All right, I think he looks pretty good. Now you can go in and add some darker colors if you think he needs some more shading. I think he looks okay. I don't think I need to add too much. I'm gonna leave him, whoops, B, put the lid on the wrong marker. Okay, so I think he looks pretty good. Okay, for our latte foam, this is called oatmeal, so we'll do that on the top here. With a light tan color, it's a zig marker. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, forgot to do his little, his little nose. I'm just gonna touch up with some dark gray. A little pink in his mouth here. I'm gonna do that same dark gray on his bottom lip. I'm just going to go straight in with the marker because there's really not too much of an area there to spread it out too much, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. Okay, and then for his little, his little cheekies, this is the Kareen marker. It's just a slightly darker than the Altenew marker we use, which was paper bag. This one's called Henna. Okay. I think he looks pretty stinking adorable. Okay, let's do his cup. Last time I did the cup all in one color, which was a green. I think I'm going to um, break this up. Maybe do like, I don't know, like a red and blue. I mean, it is almost 4th of July. So let's do a red and a blue. So I'm going to start with the red. It might be a little too wet on that one. I switched over to a larger watercolor brush too because this area is a little larger to color. So again, just kind of pre-wetting that. The first pass, normally the water just soaks right in. So you might have to do it a couple times until you can see that it is um, damp so that your ink stays on top of the paper so you have time to move it around. If your paper is too dry, um, it just soaks right in, then a lot of times you'll have line marks, brush marks. So you wanna make sure that your paper is properly saturated. This is the Altenew Crimson. And I want it darker along the edges. And then lighten as it comes into the center.
So that's one of the things I do like about using watercolors is you don't really need two or three colors to get a gradient. It's just how much water you add to give you that gradient. So you see, I just added the darker colors on the outside. I just pull that in towards the middle and I don't really need to add too many other colors to layer that. It makes it really easy. I think a lot of people get intimidated by watercolors because it does have this kind of loose organic look to it and that's what makes it fun is the recipient can see that you didn't just color this in with regular markers or pencils they it has that watercolor effect where you have the light and dark spots so you know have fun with it again it's art it's your art that you took the time to make someone in a simple design like this I mean, you can use your imagination. This is a great piece to practice coloring with all mediums. Last time I did it with a Copic marker. I think I did it before with a color pencil. So it's a great set to be able to practice my coloring. And it's a cute set. So it has a whole bunch of different sentiments that can go with it. You know, you can do thinking of you. You can send a coffee gift card in here. You can... Um, do birthday. So um, you can just practice coloring, make a whole bunch of these, and then not have to put a sentiment on until you're ready to give the card away. And then as it dries, like I see right there, this didn't blend very well. I can just go in, add some water, blend that back out. All right, I really like that. The red. do this lighter blue turquoise because I want to stamp my sentiment in the center there I think let me just wet the area again this is also a good set if you're somebody who's just building up your stash um, because again it's a unique set created by the owner of not too shabby so it's a not too shabby stamp set so it's not like something you're going to see that's all over the um, crafting pages because it's from a small owner small company but again the sentiments that are in there are so stinking cute that you can use this for anything and if you saw any of my previous videos I made it into a little I cut the top part off and I made it look like a little dog coming out of a tub um, like he was getting washed and um, that was really cute so there's a lot of versatility in this little stamp set that I think a lot of people underestimate this is how you stretch your supplies you stretch your supplies by using the same stamp set with different mediums you use the steam stamp set and change how it looks a little bit um, I did one card, like I said, that looks like a tub of the other card. I put him on an action wobbler and I had him kind of wiggling around. And this one, I'm just doing some watercoloring, which is therapeutic and fun. And it gives me some practice with these markers that are new to me. And that's it. Like super easy to do. Did not take a ton of time at all. Super cute. And... I like to add little black dots to his face to where his little whiskers would be. So I'm going to do that. Okay. And he's pretty much done. I just need to put him on a card front. Now from here, you decide where you want to go from here. Um, then I'm going to let him dry and fussy cut him while I do that I have some some older background stamps let me get those down So we're going to set him off to dry a second. While he's drying, 
and I'm going to use this Catherine Pooler ink CP minis called icing on the cake. You can also pick this up at the not too shabby shop. And these are two little stamps. Looks like I picked them up at Hobby Lobby a while ago, but they're just little animal prints. And I'm just going to put them on the back of my um, card here randomly. So I'm going to make my own kind of one layer background. Okay, there we go. So we have our cute little paw print background. Let me just clean these off real quick. And there are embossing folders. There's all kinds of things you can find that are um, pet themed. I'm sure there are background papers out there or even coffee papers out there, but I did the last one with coffee theme, so I wanted to make sure that this one was more pet themed. All right, so now I'm just going to cut him out. It's really easy to do. The red and blue cup remind me of those, what are those um, ice cream popsicles? Rockets, rocket popsicles that we used to get when we were kids. And they, well, I don't know if they still have them or not, but they have the little ice, uh, the little gumball inside the ice cream. <laughs> so you would like eat the ice cream really fast just so you could get to the gumball part. And then you'd like have the gumball in your, and it was like a, actual gum. Um, and you would be like chewing this gum, eating this frozen pop, and the gum would get all hard and frozen in your mouth. Yeah, and we wonder why we have teeth problems when we get older. <laughs> This also, by fussy cutting it, hides any of the areas where maybe my color bled out a little bit. So that's just another fun way to do this. But this one's easy to cut out. I mean, I guess you could put it in a scan and cut if you wanted to, but it's pretty simple. He almost looks like he's in a sandbox. I mean, I could do that with this one too. The other one I made into a little... um doggy bath, but I could make this into like a little doggy sandbox. <gasps> and put some sand embossing powder on there. That would be cute. Like he's at the beach. Oh, I should have thought of that one. See, another idea for next time. All right, and then once you're done fussy cutting it, you should take a black marker and then just kind of go along the edges. It just cleans up the fact that you fussy cut it, that's all. Just polishes it up, finishes off the edges. Make sure you get in all those little nooks and crannies. Okay. So 
Well, that looks cute. So now we just need to figure out which sentiment we want to use. We'll stamp that on, pop him up, and then it's an easy card. So let's take a look at the sentiments. We have... Oh, I just kind of like the hello. That is cute. Pup in a cup. I'll just do that one. Oops. Now it's kind of like a an anything goes card, so I can put it in my stash. I am going to use the little heart. I do like the little heart. And there's also a tiny, tiny little. Oh, really wanted to make a difference. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, so I have Rock and Red and Fiesta Blue also. Catherine Pooler mini inks that you can pick up from the not too shabby shop. Okay. And we're going to randomly stamp those little hearts. Good for that one. And let's grab the little one. So we made our own background paper. Watercolored our little pup in. So we're just gonna take some foam tape and pop him up. This is our Teza foam tape.
course, I'm going to add a little shimmer to the hearts. Maybe add some glossy accents to that. Here we go. Really cute pup in a cup. Simple to do. I hope you try it. If you have any questions, post them below. If you like this video, I do appreciate your thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. You'll get notifications if you click the bell on every time I post a new video. Again, you can get most of these supplies from the Not Too Shabby Shop, including the Pup in a Cup stamp set and these Catherine Pooler inks. Everything else I will link in the description for you below. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.